Hey guys. Yes, it looks familiar, but we ain't doing Oblivion. We're doing some story time with Arrowhead. Alright, let's see what the book is we have this time. It's a Imperial Blood book. Let's read. Alright, here's our story, guys. The moon and stars were hidden from the sight, making that particular quiet night especially dark. The town guard had to carry torches to make their rounds, but the man who came to call at my chapel carried no light with him. I came to learn that Mavithar, Mavart Pipquin could see in the dark almost as well as light. The excellent talent considering his interests were exclusively nocturnal. One of my arc accolades brought him to me, and from the look of him, at first thought he was to need, need was in need of healing. He was pale to the point of opnocensing, with the face that looked like it had once been very handsome. Before some unspeakable suffering, the dark circles under his eyes bespoke exhaustion, but the eyes themselves were alert, intense, almost insane. He quickly diminished my notion that he himself was ill thought he did what he did want to discuss a pacific disease vampirism he said and then paused at my squizzical look I was told that you were someone I should seek out for help understanding it who told you that? I asked with a smile. Trisna Tisna Gray. A, I immediately remembered her, a brave, beautiful knight who had needed my assistance separating fact from fiction on the subject of the vampire. It had been two years, and I had never heard whether my advice and provided effective. You've spoken to her. How is her ladyship, I asked. Oh, bump the mic, sorry. Dead Monvarth replied, cloudy, and then responding to my shock, he added to perhaps a soft, in the blow she said your advice was invaluable at least for the one vampire when the last talked to her when i when last i talked to her she was tracking another to kill her then the advice i gave her was not enough i thought cited why do you think I would have I would be enough for your for you? I was a teacher once myself years ago, he said, not in a university a trainer in a fighter fighters guild. But I know that if a student doesn't ask the right questions, the teacher cannot be responsible for his failure.
I intended to ask you the right questions, and that he did for hours he asked questions and I answered what I could, but he never volunteered any information but himself. He never smiled, he only studied me with those intense eyes of his commune commenting every word I said into the memory. Finally, I turned to the questioning around. You said you were a trainer at the Fighters Guild. Are you on an assignment for them? No, he said. Currently, the fin and finally, I could detect some awareness in those feverish eyes of his. I would like to continue this tomorrow night if I could I need to get some sleep and absorb this you sleep during the day I smiled to my surprise he returned the smile thought it was more of a grimace but tracking your prey you adopt their habits. The next day he did return with more questions. These ones very specific. He wanted to know about vampires of the eastern Skyrim. I told him about most powerful tribe in Vulcanair, paranoid and cruel, whose very breath could freeze their victims, but the Victims, blood in the veins. I explained to him how they live beneath the ice of remote and haunted lakes. They never venturing into the world of men except to feed. Mavarth Pipqueen listened. <sighs> Read myself to sleep. Carefully <laughs> asked more questions into the night until the last he was ready to leave. I will not see you for a few days, he said, but I will return and tell you how helpful your information has been. True to his word, the man returned to, the, to my chapel. Shortly after midnight, four days later, there was a fresh scar on his cheek, but he was smiling that grim but satisfied smile of his. Your advice helped me very much, he said, but you should know that the Valkanar have an additional ability. You didn't mention they can reach through the eyes of their legs without breaking it. It was quite a nasty surprise being grabbed from below with any warning. How remarkable, I said. I said with a laugh and terrifying. You're lucky you survived. I don't believe. In luck, I believe I'm in knowledge and training for training. Your information helped me in my skill at melee combat sealed the bloodsucker's fate. I've never believed in the weaponry of any kind of many unknowns, even the best swordsmen. Swords Smith has created a flawed blade, but you know what your body is capable of. I know I can land a thousand blows with without losing my balance, providing I get the first strike. The first strike, I murmured, so you must never be surprised. 
That is why I came to you, said Monvarth. You know more than anyone alive about these monsters and all of their cursed varieties across the... Oh, shoot. Across the land. Now you must tell me about the vampires of the northern Valid Wood. I did as he asked, and once again his questions taxed my knowledge, and there were many tribes to cover the bones, ma, Amo, who were indistinguishable. From Bosmer, except one seen candlelight, the Catherine who could distant target to miss the Yikv who swallowed men whole, the dread Talbos who preyed on children, eventually taking their place in the family waiting potentially for years before, murdering them all to their unnatural uh, hunger. Once again, he bade me farewell, promising to return in a few weeks. And once again, he returned as he said. Just after midnight, this time Monarth had no fresh scars, but he again had new information. <sighs> you were wrong about the Catherine Kirith being unable to vaporize when punished underwater. He said, patting my shoulder foundly fortunately they cannot travel far in their mist form and I was able to track it down it must have surprised it fearfully your field knowledge is becoming impressive, I say. I should have had the accolade like you dedicates ago. Decades ago. Now tell me, he said, of the vampires of Cyrodiil. I told him what I could. There was a one tribe in Zeradil, a powerful clan who had outsted all other competitors, much like the Imperials themselves had done. Their true name was unknown, lost in history. But where they were experts in concealment of, they kept themselves well fed. They were indisgustable from living persons. They were cultured more civilized than the vampires of the province, preferring the fed uh, on victims while they were asleep unaware. They will be difficult to surprise, monarchs frowned, but I will seek one out and tell you what I learned and then you will tell me of the vampires of High Rock and Hammerfell and elsewhere and Black Marsh and Morrowind and the Somerset Isles. Yes, I nodded knowing then that was then that this was a man uh, an 
eternal quest. He wouldn't be satisfied with but the barest hint of how things were. He needed to know it all. He did not return for a month. And on the night that he did, I could see his frustration and despair through there were no lights burning in my chapel. I failed, he said, as I lit a candle. You were right. I could not find a single one. I brought the light up in my face and smiled. He was surprised, even stunned by the pillar of my flesh and dark hunger in my ageless eyes and the teeth oh yes I think the teeth definitely surprised the man who could not afford to be surprised I haven't fed in 72 hours I explained as I fell on him he did not land the first blow or the last. That is scary and dark. Well, there we go. Story time with Arrowhead. We'll be reading this one next. Oh, that's a spell book. Never mind. That's just a spell book. But yeah, story time with Arrowhead, Mortal Blood, was the name of the book. Now, as always, guys, stay awesome.